and there'll be a notification sent out in a few minutes as well. So we'll get people that way. How are you going anyway? We're yeah. matching red. Look, I know. red and black. <laughs> you have the branding. So I, I love, love it. Here in the back too. Sorry? I love your LED that you have or that. Um... Oh, yeah. They've got yeah, a little that's, that's... Um, live the life you love. <laughs> yeah, that's sick. I love oh, that. what up, Ash? Ash has just subscribed for 13 months. Wow. There you go, on, Ash. Ash is in the chat. 14 months, sorry, 13 month streak, my God. Ash is one of my OGs, so. How are you, Ash? Good to see you here. We're just, um, we're just getting acquainted, acquainted, acquainted? What's the word? Acquainted, yeah. Acquainted. <laughs> Ash is finally in the stream again, good stuff. So you were just saying that you, um, you're you only getting uh, a couple of hours of sleep at the oh moment. My You've got God, a little baby. Yeah. Got the little oh one now. <laughs> yeah, how's yeah. that going? Oh, good. Is it it's your really... first? This is our first. first? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. So no sleep at the moment. It's ah, all. Ah, no yeah. sleep. Who needs sleep? <laughs> oh god. Who needs sleep? Uh, but it's yeah. Good. How it's... bad is it? Tell. Give us the reality. The real. Oh. Maybe I should give you like the watered down version. <laughs> you don't look. You actually don't need to give me the watered down version because we've chosen not to have children. So you can say whatever you like. It doesn't matter. You can get, could be warts at all. It's totally fine. Hey Anna, nice to see you here. Um, nah, look, it's it's all good. We're just trying to figure it out, I guess. But as every, yeah. every new parent does. <laughs> but yes. We've... Yeah. 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 I've got so much support though, because my mum is just around the corner, and Dana's parents, which is my wife, she's um, her parents are about 30, 40 minutes away. Ah, oh, that's so good. It is. And my old man's on Phillip Island with my brother. Uh, my brother lives there too, with his two kids or three kids. Um, yeah, so we've got lots of support, which is so helpful. But it's like it's just that first initial, we need your help. You know, like it's hard to ask. I find it hard to ask for help anyway, but. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just ripping that band aid off. Once we've had a little help the last couple of days, which has been really nice. So we've caught up on some rest. I think and... too, um, from what I've heard from you know all all of my friends have kids, and I think too like grandparents really love it. Like they love that you ask for that it. help, and they yeah. they're just like they're just there. They're like, yes, <laughs> we were born for this. Here we are. We know what to do. It's fine, and they're just relishing in that. So yeah, they do. They really do. So yeah, no, we. We're loving it. We are absolutely loving every second of it. Um, so, oh, that's yeah. so good. Even the lack of sleep. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy. It's like, yeah, we get up maybe two or three times a night and Dana does her thing and I just kind of sit there and rub her back and just like <laughs> song out like this. <laughs> just mutual support. I love that. What up, Britt? Nice to see you in the chat. Gypsy J, good to see you guys here. That's, that's so awesome. Um, on a very, I guess, small scale i can it to it i can totally understand a little bit but when we got jetta who's sitting on my lap today by the way she always sits on my lap what up, jetta? when we got when we got jetta um for the first couple of months we had her sleeping in a crate next to our bed yeah. and i'd have to get up i have to set the alarm every three hours to take her to the toilet so in the middle of the night, the alarm would go three times. I'd take her to the toilet, make sure she's okay, settle her again. So I kind of understand. I mean, minus yeah. obviously breastfeeding and stuff like that. It's kind of similar. You're getting up in the middle yep. of the night. No, no, I feel you. Yeah, that's 100% off. Yep. That's the only thing that I could like kind of get. But um, And that is, it's hard. It's so hard. Every time that alarm goes off, you're like, no. I don't. Yeah, I know. And your alarm would be a baby, a baby crying. So. Literally, literally. And like, you're so yeah. hyper alert too. As soon as you hear like a little, yeah, you're, you're just, just like, like, oh my God. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> is the baby okay? Okay. What are we doing? Yeah. It's so crazy. Okay. What up, AD? Nice to see you here. No worries, Brit. Lurk away. Happy birthday to your dad. You've just made him a cake. What, uh, what type of cake did you make him? That sounds amazing. Everyone loves cake here. So good. Anyway, how's your day been other than, um, you know, lack of sleep and yeah. that sort of stuff? <laughs> uh, are you, are you just trying to... Today. Okay, <laughs> cool. And are you trying to just work out, like, what your schedule looks like now Pretty that it's... Much. You know, yeah. it's... Yeah. 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 Like, I've taken five weeks off from my day job. So I yep. am a team leader for a council. Um cool. So yeah, I'll take five weeks off there. I've we've just said no to all photography shoots for now because um, yep. yeah, we've been getting a lot of shoots lately um, through our other account. But um, yeah, that's that's been doing really well, and it, we just sort of put it on hold. So our next shoot is coming up in August, but 
yeah, the next two months were just, yeah, figuring out our new life and, yeah. And just, what that looks like. Yeah, absolutely. And we're just, yeah, going to try to get out and do some landscape stuff maybe in the next couple of weeks once, um, you know, Ari's all good and, you know, we can take him places. I mean, I actually just think this is such a relevant conversation anyway just to have um, in terms of, like, you know, you've obviously got a day job, you're fitting in the stuff that you do, um, and we're going to show some of your work shortly, the landscape stuff and all, all the beautiful work that you do. Your wife and uh, yourself, you do, like, a dance photo thing as well, so you've got a lot kind of going on, and now it's, like, baby in the mix and how to <laughs> kind of balance all of those things. Like, that's, that's one of those real-life, you know... Um, conversations that people um, creatives often um, not that they don't think about it. it's like it's not o like talked about that much I guess so like what do you do in that situation where you just yeah. thrust into a whole new life you know absolutely I'm happy to share that with everybody <laughs> mm. <laughs> if got some I think it's great vote. yeah I mean if they're not in the same boat now I'm assuming that they will be most of <laughs> most people uh, at some point so I think like those conversations are super relevant yeah, definitely, definitely. I feel like so many of my mates that are um, in the same sort of gig with photography, they're just, yeah, they've got like a part-time job or they're trying to balance it out until something comes to fruition where they can go full-time with it. But yeah, it, it depends on it. I, I don't know, we can talk about it later. No, let's talk about it now. Let's, okay, start, let's, <laughs> let's, start, let's start with the balance stuff and then we'll talk about how yeah. you actually got into it at the start. I think, honestly, I actually think it's really interesting and... Um, yeah, I like trying. I mean, there's so many people, like especially people in the chat at the moment, that are doing exactly what you're doing. So they're they're working a full time or a part time job. They're like Ash has just said, I need this advice. So working a full time part time job um, and trying to balance because eventually they do want to do it full time. Like it's something that they're that that's their goal. Um, but trying to balance life is you know it's really hard. It absolutely is. Yep. And I'm still figuring that out for myself and so is Dana. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can let you know where we're at. <laughs> I can see someone's comments. Fuck balance. <laughs> A fuck balance. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, but it's like, how are you guys, I mean, obviously, um, I guess when a baby comes into the mix, you're thinking, obviously you're thinking the first priority is like making sure you've got a roof over the head. You know, the, the I guess the artistic stuff kind of goes out the window. It's not so much, you know, we're doing this for fun or we're doing this on the side. It's the priorities change is what I'm saying. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's it's actually a hard way to navigate this conversation because there's so much to talk about. But um, I think, the, the first thought that I've had leading into this is yes, let's just take some time off and it could be healthy to just give a creative break. Um, I don't know about you, Michelle, but I tend to have maybe breaks every three months just to sort of refresh my mind and ha come back with a different perspective. Um, everyone's different. Everyone's got their own thing, but I find that that works for me. Um, so yeah, I'm I would just say, um, I would just say post COVID, I'm way more conscious of that than I was pre-COVID because I was just run like on a hundred miles an hour and absolutely didn't get enough breaks. And now I'm finding I'm really needing it and, and absolutely just going okay and noticing that in myself. Okay. I need a break. I'm just taking two weeks off. Yep. It's really absolutely. important. Absolutely. And like, if anything um, that I've found through life is if you give yourself a new scenario or get out into the world and just experience a few things, you come back with just a slightly different perspective to just give a bit of spin on what you do. Now, I find that that has helped a lot for me and mm. having, having our family now, I'm starting to think differently. My actions are different. My, you know, daily routine is different now. So I'm guessing when I come back, I'm going to have a different outlook on how I take photographs and my perspectives that I give. Um, yeah, I've also heard from a lot of um, a lot of my male friends too. Once they have a um, a kid, there's this real provider instinct that just kicks in. That they, oh. even if they weren't <laughs> expecting, it's overwhelming, and they just they talk about it. It's just like all of a sudden the whole focus is, oh my god, I need to provide for my family. Like there's obviously something from an evolutionary point of view that this is like it's biological, you know. Yep, absolutely. It's funny you say that because the instantly when he was born, I mean, you have that sort of bubble moment when he's born and it's all just, you know, it is what it is. And then the last couple of days I've started thinking about, all right, I've got to start planning out some gigs. I've got to start racking in some money. We need to get this, this and this for the house. All right, let's get this going again. So yeah, yeah. actually my head is going 
to that state. And Dana's is obviously in mum mode, so she's not yeah. thinking about anything else but the health of Ari. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like, an, an, uh, again, it's an instinct or it's a, a, a maternal thing that just comes out there and it's all about providing food for the baby and protection and all that sort of stuff. It's so, like, it just is in us biologically. It's sort of those yep. things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which I find really fascinating. I just think um, I'm actually really into evolutionary biology, which is like this weird nerd thing that I was like listening to podcasts on this stuff. And I, it's just so fascinating that there's um, stuff that's just innate in us and, yeah. and often modern culture and, and even like modern values can sometimes push that or try to push that stuff to the side. And that's where we get into a lot of issues because we're trying to, overrun what is innately in us which is i find really no, interesting that's a really good point yeah yeah, yeah. i love that it's, sort of stuff yeah um, it actually really um actually really challenged my views actually as a feminist when i started listening to this stuff because there was this stuff that you're hearing that's really just innately biological and it just made me sit back and go okay where does where does that sit in my world view like that really challenges a lot of the things that i believe so i think that's really healthy as well yeah so let's, um, I'm going to pull up some of your work and we're going to talk, uh, talk to you about, let's have, let's go back to the start. We've gone into <laughs> like, we've, we've kind of gone into where you are now, but let's talk about how you began photography. We'll have a look at through some, um, some of your Instagram photos, but when did you first pick up a camera and what kind of led you to start taking photos? Yeah, I, it's funny because when I was younger, when I was really young, um, you know, before I was 10, I started taking photographs with my parents' camera and I would waste so much of their film and they get really <laughs> upset with me. But I was just going around, I, I was really morbid as a child. I was taking pictures of like dead birds and sticks. It was just all this really weird, abstracty sort of stuff, pretty dark stuff, really. Um, I love that though. <laughs> That's so cool. But I gave it a bit of a break because when, when I got to, I think it was year 10, I actually failed photography in year 10. Um, ah, that's interesting. Which was, yeah. Um, so didn't get through the theory part, so I was a bit disgruntled from that and kind of get took a break from it and then um, focused on music and sport. So that was a, a big part of my um, teenage to adult life. What then, sport did you play? Basketball. And I was going to guess that it was that, only because we're bonded over a few things that are similar and there's some things that just go hand in hand. One of them Absolutely. is basketball and sneakers usually hand in hand. So. Which is coming. Doesn't through. surprise me. It's coming. We're going to talk about that soon too. Yeah, I'm very excited uh, about that. So after yeah, after I sort of got to maybe 25, 26, I'm 32 now. Uh, sorry, I lie. 33 now. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, it's all right. We all lost a year last year. We're all like whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Great save. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I picked up the camera. My first camera was um, a Sony A6000. Um, amazing camera. Um, great little sort of APS-C sensor style camera and just started taking pictures of, you know, the surf, my, my dad, my, both my dad and my brother are surfers. So I was, you know, go out on the point and take a couple of shots with, um, with them. And then it started to go a little bit more. So I started thinking, all right, I might need to get like a full frame um, camera. So I looked into Nikon and really liked how Nikon layouts were. Um, just felt pretty natural. I tried a Canon, I tried, you know, more Sony stuff and just, it felt pretty good to use a Nikon. So I just went with Nikon. Um, I didn't really know about tech specs back then. I, I like to think I know a bit more about it now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, back then I was just like, yeah, cool. I, this guy says it's good. I'm, I'm going to give it a shot. So you sound um, about as um about me like that's how I am with tech specs. I'm like, eh, it does the thing it needs to do, and uh, <laughs> I'm happy with it. It's about where my tech ability finishes. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, I got a D610, um, and then just the kit lens. Cool. So I was just you know running around, going all across Victoria. You know, finish work, finish my shift, and get out there and just start taking snaps and. I was just so motivated to get out, but a lot of what I was dealing with at the time, it helped me because I sort of transitioned out of the music career from basketball into this new career of like professional, um, I guess, council work and then also photography. Um, yeah. So I used the getting out into the landscape and nature as kind of like a therapeutic tool and having a camera was just a bonus, but um, that's yeah. what sort of made me to get out was, you know, just to escape from sort of the, the hustle and bustle of, you know, just corporate life and city life. Um, I've lived in the city mm. for a while now, back down in Gippsland, um, living here now. So 
much different um, different scenes down here. But yeah, it was uh, really really uh, challenging going through that period. But um, yeah, n- nature photography kind of took me away from that and helped me grow um, not only as a person but just mentally as well. So yeah. After a while, uh, I started getting a little bit more serious about it. Instagram was becoming a real thing um, back in sort of 2015 through to 2020, 21 now. Um, yeah. And wanted to start growing on that. So that was a, a bit of a motivator to, to get me posting and get me out there and, you know, take more photos. And then after a little bit, I started thinking, all right, why am I doing this? Why am I just sitting here taking pictures and posting them? Like, is there a means to this or is it just sort of like an endless thread that I'm yes. thinking is going to end? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I took a bit of a break and um, yeah, just started thinking, all right, what do I want to do with this? Do I want to start looking um, at going semi professional and try to get some work going? Um, so I started doing some brand content and started doing some um, like just product stuff, really, really um, mm-hmm. quite simple website type of stuff. It wasn't too flashy, mm-hmm. but the people I was looking up and looking at was incredible stuff. So I used that as a motivator mm-hmm. to start getting in there. And just, just who were it. who were some of those people that you were kind of looking at those early days? Do you remember? Oh, no, sorry, I've got a couple on YouTube. Oh, that's right. Actually. I'll have a quick yeah, look. Yeah, yeah, um... yeah. Just interested to know. It's like um, good for people to be looking at different stuff to be inspired by. But um... yeah, absolutely. Hang on, let me just see. But um, yeah. Ash, so I... Ash was saying before she just like oh, I'm gonna go back to the shot, but the um, the shot with the torch that's like the um. It's like an astro shot with you. There's a and yeah, I don't know if it's you. It looks like you holding a torch up in the sky. Oh or... no, that's Jules. That's my mate. That was in New ah. Zealand. Yeah, um, we did awesome. a tour of New Zealand in so oh, cool. I'd like to say 2018. It was 2018. I thought maybe you did a, a tricky like remote. You know, you ran. You know, remote <laughs> shot or no, you ran normally... over there. I normally do that, um, but fortunately, that <laughs> for me. So I just said, "Mate, can you just jump out there for a second? Yeah, such a great shot. Thank you. It was um, so yes. cool. Have you been to New Zealand before? I have. I um, when I first started shooting weddings with Ollie Sansom, who's a, a I don't know if you know Ollie, but he's a brilliant photographer. We actually shot a wedding on the South Island, and oh, uh, yeah. and I'd been to the North Island before um, to play basketball when I was younger. Yep. But the South Island was just like, it's, it, there's no words. There's actually, it's like, it doesn't even look real. It's no. like, this is, this is like a simulation. Yeah, <laughs> it literally looks photoshopped. For anyone who hasn't yeah. gone to South Island and said, definitely yeah. put that on your bucket list because you get off like either Queenstown or... Queenstown. And when yeah. you're flying into Queenstown, you're like, this is not real. Like, uh, what is this? It's yep. <laughs> so yep. beautiful. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, that was a, that was an amazing trip. That was probably, um, yeah, that one, that was NZ. That was the same trip as well. Um, but yeah. Did I you went, go just to take photos? Was that the pretty purpose much, of the trip? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was, I've been, I went to the North Island back in 2013, but that was pre photo head. <laughs> and yeah. then I thought I've got to get back there. I've got to give this a go with, you know, some of the stuff I've learned. And then I went back a second time in 2016 and I've uh, yeah. got some good stuff, but um, that was sort of like a solo travel. It was a bit of a discover myself again after everything. And then oh, I came. Oh, so good. Yeah. It, oh, my God. It was freezing, though. Like, <laughs> I, I hadn't really <laughs> gone to NZ and, you know, experienced the cold. We went in the summertime um, previously, but yeah, it's just another level of cold at night. <laughs> so I learned the oh. hard way. Um, but yeah, this... it is really another level of cold. It really yeah, is. It's, it's very crispy. Um, but yeah, the, the next time I went, I went with my mate Jules, um, Julian Lalo. He's a fantastic Melbourne photographer. I don't know if you've heard of him. He does. Um, I haven't. I'll look him up for sure. Yeah. Him and I have been shooting for a couple of years now. We met up um, at a photo walk, actually, and we just kind of clicked and started hanging out. And yeah, we, we sort of get out when we can, but we've both got kids now. So it's, um, you know, oh, fine. Yeah. Ash, um, Ash just said she knows him. She, uh, just said he's amazing as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. And welcome to the uh, True Warrior. I just saw that you followed. Um, welcome to the crew. Nice to have you here. Uh, sorry, continue. I did a... Uh, no, no, no. Just doing, right. um, doing the formalities. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we um, yeah we, we travelled over there together. Um, crazy trip. We got in, I think, at like four in the morning. So we slept in the airport for a couple of hours. Some people may have experienced that <laughs> travelling before. 
Um, yeah. And yeah, we were just we were just waiting for our juicy band to become available, so we went and picked it up. <laughs> um, and it was actually a bit of a hike. We, I think it was about four k's, and with like two hours sleep, you just yeah. Oh it was, my god. It felt a lot longer. Um, but then. As you would know, when you're coming off that plane in Queenstown, you just the adrenaline, seeing all the scenes, and you're just so hyped. You just want to get out there and just start experiencing yeah. New Zealand. So we absolutely. Yeah, we we travelled. Um, we, where did we go first up? I think we went to Lake Tekapo. No, Lake Pukaki first. So we travelled from the north end down to more the central side, and. Once we got there, we sort of, yeah, traveled around, just, um, yeah, sat up and just camped out for the night. And then we met up with a, another um, couple of friends of ours, Brenton um, and Carly, his wife. So if anyone knows Brenton Captures on Instagram, he's another great um, landscape photographer and um, does a lot of portraits with his family as well. He's fantastic. Um, wow. So we, we met up with them um, at Mount Cook and yeah we we just went around mount cook and started taking shots did some astro stuff um there is a really cool shot i took um from mount cook i think it's uh with their volkswagen uh let's see if i can find it yeah see it's it might be a few scrolls down um okay. mount yeah, cook volkswagen yeah <laughs> think about it <laughs> yeah, we'll see if we can find it. But yeah, that was that was such a cold night, and being cold nights, it was super clear. Um, yeah, the the Milky Way was right in front of where we wanted it to be, and it just yeah. <laughs> Hold that thought. Someone has just rang my doorbell. Um, give me two seconds. I yeah, want to see right. who that is. Talk to the people. I'll Entertain keep, them. <laughs> um, <laughs> excuse me. So yeah, that was um super cold night and we yeah managed to just get a few shots out there and then after that we um we traveled further down to the south more towards queenstown and yeah from there we, we stayed there a couple of nights um traveled a little bit further down went to milford sound milford sound if anyone has been to milford sound absolutely incredible um I'm not sure if you haven't seen it look it up because it's it's definitely worth um venturing there one day but um yeah, once we once we'd gone through all the the South Islands, we we headed home. So, yeah, if if I can say, you, you, if anyone wants to go, you, you definitely got to check it out. It's it's something else. Um, but a couple of other places that we've been, um, Tasmania is another place that's really close to get to and quite back. similar. Oh, it's back. I back. I back. I back. Sorry about that. Um, I'm trying to find this shot with the Volkswagen. Yeah, keep going down. I'll, I'll see if I can. Find so it. many amazing photographs. Yeah. Hang on, let me just switch accounts. Let's see. All your photographs are so beautiful. I want to talk to you about um, finding your style in a minute too, but... Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Thank you. That's so kind of you to say. I can't remember where I first... Where did we first connect? I actually don't know. I know, oh, I know we I, recently I, just started oh. talking about sneakers but I don't know we, how long we've been following each other this I think, is cool I think it was something maybe it was Nikon stuff I'm not sure oh maybe yeah yeah I, I mean quite possibly <laughs> I can't remember to be honest but I can't either way we've been following each other for a little bit now yeah a little bit yeah totally oh, yes, right. maybe I need to repost it um yes repost if you find it hang on hang on oh I found it hang on I'll send you the link Send me the link in the uh, in the Skype chat, or put it. Are you have you got the Twitch chat up? Oh, I do. I just sent it in the Skype one. Oh, hang on. Let me. I'll put it in both. Let's see here. Okay. Yeah. Put it in the chat. Um, sometimes the Skype. There we go. There we go. I can pull that up on the page. There right. we go. That's such a beautiful shot. Oh my god. Look at that. Let's make sure I res. Oh, wrong one. Resize that. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so that was a little while ago now. But yeah, that that is I need to have that printed off. I love yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, absolutely yeah, phenomenal. Perfect conditions. Perfect conditions. It was super clear. Um, yeah. <sighs> anything zero and below, you're gonna get a clear sky. Hopefully anyway, if it's not stormy. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Gosh, it's so phenomenal. It's I mean, 
anytime I see astrophotography, it really is because I guess where we don't get to see what that looks like all the time, and we take it for granted that that's just above us. I know. Everybody. So it's just phenomenal when that you know we have such talented photographers like yourself that can capture what is literally just there, but most of the time we can't see. It's, I think that's what keeps me motivated to do nighttime stuff because often you have to get up pretty late to get out there. It's like 3 a.m. sometimes. Um, but exactly what you just said, it just it, it's so incredible to just know that a camera can capture something like that so clearly and that's what's above you and you're just out by yourself. There's no one else around, um, you know, nice and peaceful. Yeah. Yeah, I that think that's what... Absolutely incredible. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, but let's uh yeah let's talk about finding your style because I think that's something a lot of that uh, a lot of young photographers really struggle with knowing how to do that. Do you remember the process? Were you just looking at a lot of other people, or how did you kind of find where you like photos to sit? I started looking at a lot of um, other artists, um, particularly landscapes at that time because that was sort of my growth period. Starting out was in landscapes. I think that's where most people start these days. Um, mm. And yeah, I just had a few people that I, I really liked and um, just kind of studied their shots unknowingly, just, um, you know, go, going through my Instagram feed, that's almost like a form of study because you're just constantly looking at mm. this, these photos that motivate you. So when I do um, teach people um, photography and the basics, I try to set people up to just follow only a couple of people. Otherwise it can start to get um, a bit cloudy. Get very overwhelming. Absolutely. <laughs> Because <laughs> I think too that the other trap too, and I, it's that it's trying to find that balance because you want to know where you want to get to, but it can actually be discouraging if you are seeing that your photos are not there at the start. If that makes sense, so you don't want to put yourself off, but it's really great to be inspired. So Aww. it kind of depends the type of person you are sometimes as well it can be really conflicting mentally and sometimes yes. all you yes. need is um just some help and some guidance from someone who is where you would like to be realistically so you may not be at the very top of the game where you know um, someone's been doing it for 10 20 years but someone who's maybe doing it for a couple of years and you would like to aspire to get there then absolutely that, yeah. that's a good start Otherwise, yes, it can get overwhelming because there is a lot of post-processing that's involved. Um, although the foundation's there that you set up when you take the image, mm. um, there's still a lot of editing work that's to be done. There's a lot of um, yeah, contrasting, a lot of shadows to bring out, colour as well that you need to add into the Milky Way and sort of mm. dissect it um, in bits and pieces. So as I got, um, I'd like to say, better at what I did, um, I started to figure out a formula for each sort of photograph that I take. So every photograph that I take now, composition wise, I start to break down in my mind, how am I gonna, um, you know, I guess enhance the image that I've already got. And over time, I started to develop different formulas in my mind with what works for me. And if you mm. can try to break, break things down in, in simple format where you're doing your, your individual sliders, then you take it into post-processing Photoshop and just do a couple of little tweaks here and there and start to learn all the different tools in Photoshop. Over time, you'll develop that knowledge. But at the start, it is so overwhelming to know, you know, what a paint tool does and what an editing tool does or a spot here. That's so, are you, are you doing most of your editing in Photoshop, not Lightroom? I, yeah, so I, I, I do all my catalog management in Lightroom. And then mm -hmm. from there, you can do um, a right click on your image, then go to edit in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And then yep. you can go and do all that sort of stuff. But I do sort of my basic, editing um, and kind of flatten out the image in Lightroom to just get it right mm -hmm. and ready. And then I take it into Photoshop, then I start doing all my editing. So, um, you know, oh, using the spot healing tool. Yeah, oh, that, that's my way of doing it. There's so many ways yeah, of doing yeah. it. I, no, I do that's why I love so hearing. I love hearing that. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to actually find out what, what your basic um, rundown is of your process too. <laughs> that's all right at some stage. Uh, yeah, no, I do all of my, all of my color, actually like 80% of my work is in Lightroom. Yep. And then um, once the clients have selected their finals, which is usually, say, 15 portraits, then I'll do what you just said, right click and open up in Photoshop and do the retouching in Photoshop. But the majority kind of looks like what it's going to look like yep. from Lightroom. And then any of the kind of skin smoothing detail stuff is in Photoshop. 
Um, yes. I've just, yeah, yeah. I think because I started as a live music photographer and nearly all live music photographers do it that way. It's just because it's bulk processing. I've yeah. always done color grading in Lightroom, but I know a lot of people don't do it like that. So it just what is what works for me. So it, that's actually a really good point because it also helps consistency with the product that yeah. you're to your client. And oftentimes yeah. I've gotten into the trap where you get so individualized to that photo. Sometimes they can look different in an album and it's not the same product that you're giving to the client. Um, totally. That's one so, good thing about Lightroom is that batch processing stuff is like everything yeah. can look really consistent. And I think that again, that's why for live music sets, I got really in that, that cycle. And then same for, even with um, portraits, the set of each lighting setup will always be graded the same. And then the, just the retouching is done in Photoshop. But yep. yeah, like I said, you know, everybody does a different, uh, most of the, the photographers that I watch on Twitch, um, do it like you do. They, yep. they do the majority of their stuff in, even the portraits, pe portrait people. It's only really live music photographers that I've seen. It's really weird. We all do it the same, even though a lot of us have never spoken to each other. It's like, it's this weird thing that pro <laughs> even the cat, even cataloging and how we like sort our, um, filing system is the same, but nobody has ever taught us. It's really bizarre. That's so it's really crazy. interesting. It's, yeah. Same, I guess it actually. just makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I fully agree with you. Um, so, uh, yeah, so um, after I've done all the Photoshop stuff, um, mm. you do your normal dodge and burning stuff and then off you go and bring it back into Lightroom, maybe make some slider adjustments. But one thing I do like to do is um, come back to the images a couple of days later. And I learned this mm. style from when I did music production because I was a music producer for a year too. Oh, um, cool. And one thing that I learned with giving your ears a break is the same with giving your eyes a break because I often get yes. too caught into the image and I start really fine picking the image down and then you come back to a couple of days later, um, later and you're just like, well, what was it thinking? Like, it's just oh, like, I so many, I've out. done that before. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, what was I thinking <laughs> with this edit? This is horrific. I need to start again. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Even sometimes a half an hour break where you just like go get a cup of coffee or your tea or whatever, you come back and you're like, that is horrible. I need nice. to start that <laughs> set again. Yep. No, it's cool. so funny. That's so cool. I'm sure there's a lot of people here that do the same. Yes, Ash has said that. She said, oh my God, I do this. Sometimes I come back and say, why is this so bad? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, uh, so many times. Um, also, I remember when I used to edit weddings and you would, sometimes you ed a lot of people edit weddings in Lightroom as well. And sometimes you're, you're doing kind of slight tweaks as you go and, and you copy and paste into the next image. And by the end of the set, you're like, it looks totally different from the front start of the set. You were doing all these like tweaks. You're like, wait, yep. the skin tones are really different. This is bizarre. And your mood changes throughout the day too. Oh, your you know, mood like changes, you, you get yes. that first caffeine hit, so you're into it, you're doing all the crazy <laughs> stuff, then towards the end you start, I start getting lazy anyway, and I just start going yeah. overlay, 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 and then you come back the next day, exactly what you just said, you're looking at yes. it, you finish, what? Because I think, yeah. You're like, what was I doing here? <laughs> so weird. Um, yeah, that's funny. Connor just said he feels that spiritually. Connor's a music photographer as well. He, oh, he understands. Understands what we're saying, Captain Lasagna. Um, uh, I'm just, I'm very inspired. Every time I see Astro shots, I'm always so inspired. But I'm just definitely not a landscape photographer. Like, I don't think I have it in me. It's, um, in just, I think there's like, especially when I look at those Astro shots, patience, you have to get up in the cold, it has to be the right, you know, right temperature and all those sort of things. Like, yep. Yep. Yeah, it's. I have so much um, respect for what you guys do. Ash just asked, how long would you spend on a photo? That's such a great question. That is a really good question. Depends mm. on the, I guess, um, the topic that you're covering. So if it's landscape, sometimes I can spend maybe 40 minutes to 50 minutes on it. It really depends on, um, I guess, how I'm feeling and what the image gives me. But yeah, for a landscape, some between half an hour and 50 minutes. Um, the shot that, that's up there now, um, that's at Lake Tekapo. Um, mm -hmm. That took a little while because, you know, there's a lot of dynamic with the mountain. Um, there's the moon above there as well. And then you've got someone walking across the landscape as well. Um, taking the photo was like, you know, a two second thing. You just sort of snap it, then you're off, you know, on your way. But um, yeah, that took about, I think, 40 minutes to do. Um, wow. There's a, a rest period in there as well because, 
you know, just color grading it and bringing it back because I wanted that blue to stand out, but the sky was also the same color. Uh, I didn't mm. want to detract that from the, the late ah, color. So, interesting. Yep, um, yep, yep. Done a bit of a grad fade um, mm -hmm. in Lightroom and just desaturated it a little bit with the blue. Um, and mm. I think it's come out okay. Yeah, um, it's beautiful. But, uh, yeah, so, um, sorry, I can't remember what the question was before. Was oh, Ash was about? just saying, um, just, oh, she was asking her how long would it take for you? Oh, to, yes, sorry, to Ash. Um, yeah, so for landscapes, yeah, uh, 30 minutes to 50 minutes. Um, if it's some of the dance stuff and some of the portrait stuff that I've done previously, um, sometimes it can take five minutes. Um, some mm. takes, sometimes it can take half an hour. Um, because that's the business side of things, I try to look at things and how long I'm spending time on as opposed to like what um, I guess the, the cost was for that shoot. So it depends yes, on what the, what the person point. wants. Yeah, so in your mind, you're sort of thinking about that sort of stuff. So I try not to go any more than 20 minutes, calculate it out. That's how much time I've um, allocated my time to spend on an image to or an spend. album for someone. Yeah. Um, so normally, if, like you, you've got you know many albums that you need to get through, particularly if you're working with a, mm. an artist. Um, I mean, you work with high-end artists. I work with um, sort of local dancers. Um, they they're pretty cool with a lot of the edits that I do. I just kind of do my style, but um, yeah, often I can get through sort of one or two albums and then know the formula in my mind, what I'm doing mm -hmm. so that I can keep it consistent yeah. throughout the rest of them. Cause yeah. we, we have photo days that we can have anywhere from 15 to 20 dancers in one day shooting. Wow. Um, and that's, that's all lot. location based as well. So we'll, yeah. we'll work sort of from like eight till six, um, have a break in between and then just smash them out. So similar to you, like oh. you, you get your proofs up and then off you go and then send them out and then they come back so what was your um was it dance flicks is that dance the, flicks um... the other one yeah so preparing... i'll pull it up quickly i we yeah we're just we don't know how much we can show on twitch it's a bit um some of it's a bit tos he's a lovely one this i think we'll be okay with this one um not that they're all not lovely but so <laughs> don't, don't want to seem like a yep. yes That's yes fine. exactly yeah. um this is this is gorgeous. I love this. Um, yeah, some of it I don't know if Twitch will like ban me for it. We have to be a little bit careful. Sorry, <laughs> Twitch. Um, no, but this is a. It's. Um, I actually started off my career shooting dancers, which is it's a long, really weird story. But um, I actually had a dance production company, so I was shooting a lot of dancers when I start, and they're probably my favorite subject to shoot because they're so uh, self-aware. Um, oh. comparatively to musicians, which is the complete opposite, and they hate having their photo taken, whereas dancers really aware spatially. They know what their body looks like. They're, they're, they'll hit poses. They're happy to perform. It's like a dream to shoot dancers. Do you agree? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> my my partner... Oh, sorry, my partner. I've got to stop saying that. My wife. Um, <laughs> <laughs> are you recently <laughs> married? <laughs> we are. We got married, so I'm oh, still cute. learning. <laughs> still learning. It's okay. Um but yeah, she she was a dancer too. So she um yeah used to perform quite a lot of Melbourne. Melbourne. Um, she'd be um, working at music festivals and music gigs. Um, and you know when you see those people that hang from the roof on the hoops and oh, flames on and stuff, yes. that was her. So she yes. used to do that sort of stuff, and she used to own her own studio and um you know trained at some pretty high end places. And um, this sounds gorgeous. A lot of I just before I go in, a lot of what you see here, this is the extent of what we do. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people have a misconception about what pole dancing is. Um, we photograph the, um, I guess, pole athletes. So there's a lot of um, pole competitions around Australia. And they're I all... think um, pole dancers are probably some of the fittest and most, most oh, yeah. athletic women. If they're more, they're not always women, but let's just say people. I have so much respect for what they do. Yep. Um, it's yep. friggin' incredible. Absolutely and I'm, I'm maybe like two years into photographing um, this subject and I'm giving it maybe three or four years um, as sort of like a life subject to take off because um, there's, I don't know, I, I like to sort of document my life through my images and when I look at this image, mm. I go, oh, that's where I was in, in life and sort yes. of this feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this particular image is probably my favourite shot that I've taken. So beautiful. And So beautiful. Maddie. The is, lighting is phenomenal. That was a crazy setup. That was kind of like a guesstimate setup because we've got, I don't know if you've ever shot at establishment studios in, um, in Fitzroy, but this is establishment I have not. studios and it's, okay. um, yeah, like this 
yeah, eighteen hundred sort of style. You can see with the pillars and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and that's what I wanted yeah. to get. Um, there's skylights that come through um, on the northern side, and you get this sort of light, but it's not enough to punch through. Um, you would have mm -hmm. seen in that previous shot with um, KP that uh, it was kind of like a ballet pose. That was the natural yes. light coming through, so I had to bump the ISO okay, cool. to get that shot. But for this one, we had um, one of our studio lights mimicking sort of that light coming through. Oh, um, cool. That was our main key light, and then the, we had another... And was that um, uh, like a flashlight, like a flash, or was it a yeah, constant light. light you had? Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, no, no. Light. yeah cool. I do work with um, uh, continuous lighting, but... I don't know. Sometimes it just depends on what environment you're in. I bring yeah. all that up with yeah. me, but you know, you know what it's like when you rock up. You yeah. just sort of get the feeling of the room and get the feeling of the person. You totally. just like it's not going to work today. You just you go to the tool that you're going to. Um, Absolutely. And so the the pole. Did you guys bring that in? Was that something like a yeah, portable thing? That that's you, yeah. A, a portable okay. pole. So yeah, we, wow. we take that to all our gigs. We do a lot of outdoor stuff as well. Um, depending on if cool. we're work, working in the studio, then we don't have to bring it because it's all set up and ready to go. But um, yeah. Yeah. This is the sort of stuff that we we like to do and try to stick to. Um, you know, try to keep it. So gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. So Thank gorgeous. You. Really, really beautiful. It's great that you um you and your wife can do this stuff together as well. You know, there's um, you know, something I love. I love that you know when partners can work together and do something that they're both passionate about, which is super cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um. So I've done ballet stuff as well. Um, this is a shot of Tess. She's um, yeah done a lot of performance around Melbourne. She's worked with some of the best ballet photographers around Melbourne that I look up to as well for this subject. Um, but yeah, this was uh, at Dream Space Studios, which is now shut down, unfortunately. Um, they shut down early oh. this year because of COVID. So probably, oh, I hope, yeah, I hope someone picks it up later on um, in the next year or two because that was one of our favorite studios to shoot out of. Um, we've done a lot of portrait stuff and, um, you know, run a lot of our business through there. So, but this, yeah, this is a shot of Tess. Um, you know, I'm still sort of wrapping my head around the names of all the different poses, but I know <laughs> lines and I know when I see something that I like and um, yes. really like the shape. The other thing I was going to say, because um, I've had this experience shooting dancers, is they are really, really particular with the lines and okay. with the feet positions. And yep. if their feet and the lines are not exactly where they should be, <laughs> even if you think it's a great photo, they'll be like, nah, that shit. And you're just like, yeah. this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And they're like, no, no, my feet are not pointed enough in that and my my line isn't high enough or whatever so they'll just and and you've got all these amazing photos on the ground <laughs> that's so funny you say that that's so true that is so true because like yeah you're right you've got your photography lens on and you start showing oh, yes. look at the light look at the shadow on you just on your shoulder there and they're just like nah I hate and it. they're just I like again. nah yeah yeah and i right. think too because other nah. specifically dancers because they're looking at it from the perspective of what other dancers will say so if they don't hit all of those things i think specifically with feet like that was the one thing that i learned yeah. was um how feet are meant to appear in because i was photographing ballerinas as well uh and and contemporary dancers and they were really hard on themselves and but the other thing is they would like they would do the poses over and over and over and over again to get it perfect and they wouldn't yeah. stop until yep. they hit it. They were just like, no, nah, do it again, no, nah, do it again. You're it's like, crazy. okay. And here I am complaining that I have to squat down low to take the shot yeah. and get back up and I'm just like, oh my God, I need a drink. <laughs> I know, they're so phenomenal. It's so great. Athlete. Um, all right, we'll go back to your um, your other one so we don't get in trouble by Twitch. But um, yep. Thanks for Asha said, that. I really appreciate no, it. That no, no, it's that, beautiful that takes work. takes up a lot of our business um, lately. That's, it's, re it's really I, gorgeous I work. A lot of wedding stuff and then that just sort of took off and, you know, when something takes off, you just kind of go with it. Absolutely. Ash just said, um, how do you work with that? Are you tethering or constantly showing throughout the shoot? Are I'm, you meaning... Oh, yeah, you go. I, if you I, understand yeah, I think I, that's a really good question because <laughs> I really like to tether when I'm working just with portraiture um because uh, i'm working with continual burst and trying to get the fastest amount the computer doesn't relay that back quick enough so mm. i often just go freelance and just you know have the yeah. camera in front of me and then off i go and then once we've done a set and we've gone through some of the tricks i'll get her to come down and you know we'll go through it on the camera and just say oh do you like this line blah 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 do you want to do that again and then off we go so um we yes. have we have 30 minute slots and we've got enough time to sort of run through that and get everything that they need that is part of our package um but yeah, tethering, I absolutely love tethering because sometimes, I don't know if you get this, Michelle, but when you look at your camera, it looks phenomenal. And then you, in terms of like dynamics and lighting and everything, you take yes. it onto the, 
the computer and it's like, wow, that's actually nothing what I thought it was when you, you know, took yes. the Yes, I haven't um, worked out how, because like this again, I'm really bad with tech stuff. Um, I haven't worked out how to tether from my Z6 II. Uh, I don't think okay. I've got the right cable for it. Yeah. I used yeah, to yeah. have, you know, the yellow, the yellow cable used to attach to my D4, yeah. but yep. I tried just doing... Because I think it just said you needed a USB C to USB C, and it just—I yep. don't know—it wasn't working. I think I just have the wrong cable. Essentially, it's... what's happening? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't tried tethering yeah. with this because I've got a Z6, and I really like this camera, but I'm finding that, um, yeah, it's it's not quite working for studio stuff. Do you get it when you work in like a really dark environment? That if you're mm -hmm. working with flash, does the screen articulate what's in front of you? Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. So. No, so you need to turn the live view off. Yep. And so then it will... So it's the opposite of how you usually shoot. Usually, Because do you use just the, the LCD to um, Yeah, I usually shoot? shoot just like that and sort of... Yeah, same. Up. Yep. So if you turn that live view off, so it's not showing you what the settings are, you can shoot in the studio that way. I had someone from Nikon tell me that because I was it was really throwing me. So I had to, I can show you that I can actually take the photo of the actual setting. That would um, be great. It's, yeah. So then it will, you can still focus in the studio because it'll focus to whatever, like, because otherwise it's too dark. You yes. won't be able to, you won't be able to focus. Yeah. yeah. So you have to turn that off, then you can focus it probably. And then it'll come out how it's exposed for your studio lights and you'll see it when it, when on the playback, yep. but not on the screen. So it's just like reverse of what you kind of used to but um so that's why i shoot yeah i shoot all of my stuff with the z62 thank you um i spy you sent me a link i will grab that link uh i'll grab that link and look at that post show uh jay pierce welcome to the chat six months subby nice to see you here how are you going all right let me just add this to my notes so i can make sure i check i really need to get that sorted because i uh I've tried a couple of times and it just hasn't worked for me. So, yeah, okay. um, but yeah, so you definitely can do it in the studio and it works, works really well. I just had someone from Nikon, um, Julie, do you know Julie? Do you know Julie from Nikon? I don't think I met Julie. I know yeah, DL. She, um, uh, I don't know DL, I don't think. DL. Um, Julie does a lot of the video and streaming content. So I've met her uh -huh. that way. Cool. Uh, and she was showing me how to do that. And it does actually, um, don't go after the wire wireless tether tool stuff they offer. It doesn't transfer fast at all. Are you saying yeah. don't, don't, don't do the link that you just sent me? Or are you saying don't do, um, I don't know. Anyway, let me know. <laughs> let me know what you mean. <laughs> or they need to buy something like ASAP. Um, cause I, I do really like tethering in the studio. I just think it's like you said, you can't. Yeah, you think it looks great, and you're just like, oh, it's not, yeah, it's not uh, amazing. I know, I know. And you get home, and it's just like, oh, my God. But then you have oh, to like... just spend a bit more editing time on it and yeah. get what you, what you felt when you took it. Yeah, 100%. Um, how are you being, JP? I haven't seen you in ages, so good to see you here. Um, so what, uh, I, guess, I guess, after you have your break, you have a little bit of break, and are you going to go back into kind of your landscape stuff are you wanting to do this at some point? Is that your goal? Like, do you want to do this full time? Are you happy with that balance to kind of do a, you know, semi-professional kind of vibe? I like the balance. Um, I think if anything I learned from the music stuff, because the music stuff, once you get ingrained in it, it can become quite repetitive and it takes away the fun of what you're doing. And yep. although I could have the ability to go full time with photography, um, it just hasn't quite resonated with me yet. It hasn't felt right to go full time. Mm, um, yeah, I, just don't, I don't want to force it. I don't want to feel like that yeah. this is now my job and I have to do this for someone. Like I like to work at my own pace and that's why the dance work stuff, it's all at our own pace. Or, or we get, mm. you know, we, we have set deadlines and we, we make it our own, but I don't like working for brands and companies because they mm. have a different outlook to what I have. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's a strange one to... you got to find the right client, don't you? Yeah, really? yeah. And I don't want to sound ungrateful for any work that comes my way as a photographer because sometimes work is hard to come by. Sometimes there's too much work, but mm. I just, it just doesn't feel right at the moment. So, yeah. Maybe you absolutely don't want to do it full time if it's, 
yeah, if it feels like, I don't know, for, the, for me anyway, because I don't, often it doesn't feel like work, really. Yep. It's always really fun. <laughs> it's yeah. like the best job in the world, you know, you want it to feel like you want to get up in the morning. And, but I, I totally get that though. It's, I've definitely had periods where it's felt really repetitive and it's just like you have to, sometimes I'll just have to do like a personal project or something to get me out of the repetition, if that makes sense. Because clients will often want stuff that they've seen of yours and that can get really repetitive. So I have to go out and just do something really creative for myself. And it is. And it's a, it's a positive thing in a way that you're staying consistent because at least your um, clientele know what they're getting when they yeah. have packages that they buy. Like, like for landscapes now, I think this is my way of diverting that attention from the repetitiveness to something different and something a bit more creative. And I think that's totally. what's sort of helping me, um, yeah, just get out of that sort of repetitive rut um, and just, yeah, get out in nature and, you know, try something else. <laughs> I love it. Comes. Yeah. I love it. I, um, I've just got in con con uh, ugh, contact with um, a company, um, Ripper Ride. Have you heard of Ripper yeah. Ride? Yep. Yeah, so um, I'm hopefully going to be shooting some stuff for them. And that is very much outside what I usually do. But um, they're super keen to try different photographers that have different skills as well. And they kind of send you away to a property and you get to shoot it and stuff like that, which I haven't been in that world before. So I'm like really oh, excited. I'm like, where it. are we going? Yeah. Adventure, where are we going? <laughs> You'll absolutely love it. It looks did, amazing. I a few friends uh, a little while ago. It was when Ripper Ride really started to, um, yeah, contact Instagrammers and find out who was the sort of the travel photographers at the time. And yeah, Kirk, yeah, Kirk yeah. Richards was one of those guys that invited us to go down and, and stay at this place and picked up a few from that. And I guess that was probably yeah the introduction for me doing that. But you'll mm. absolutely love it because you get an excuse yeah, to get so away. Yeah. And, yes, you know. that's the thing. It's like a, you get away. And I've like looked at the pro even like, you know, sometimes where it's like, I don't know, a, one of those little tiny houses or something, you know, yeah. like something like that. It's just so totally different in the middle of nowhere. You get like a, you know, a bit of a getaway for the weekend, take some nice photos. Like it just sounds like pretty good deal to me. There's some crazy <laughs> An excuse places to get there. away. Probably yeah. Had a look, but yeah, it's crazy. How many yeah, cool I had places? a look over the weekend. I was like, I had no idea. There were so many amazing, uh, I should actually show the website. Um, I'll show the Instagram while we're talking about it for people that don't know what it is. Really um, cool. specifically for, for people in Australia, for little getaways. I, and they're like all regional as well. So, yep. um, they basically, they, they get, uh, storytellers, they're called like photographers on board to, um, and they send them away to locations to take photos of different properties and yeah, they cover your accommodation and, and then you just. Show. This is the one that interested me the most. When I saw that there was a, a pet friendly place, I was like, sign me up. Because it's so hard to find pet friendly places yep. that are cool to go away. And so I, on my list, I was like, anything that's pet friendly, you can send me to those places. I want to take photos with my dogs in regional places. Yeah. Something like that. You can I know. I mean, my dog would absolutely not be able to reach, um, but we could pop her in. We could pop her in the jacuzzi with us, and it would be. Yeah. That's so cool. But yeah, these are these are cool. They're really great. So you get to take photos of the, the properties, and it's so it's such an awesome idea. I it was is. like, this it's is amazing. It's so cool. It is so cool. Um, we went to Bright not long ago. Have you ever been to Bright? <gasps> I have, yeah, oh, I have. Nice. Yeah. Um, back when I used to, because um, I'm from Shepparton, and anytime we would go skiing, you'd have to go kind of through Bright to get to the mountains. Yep. So we, yeah, it's such a great, a great spot, Bright. Yeah. That's um, awesome. Yeah. So anyway, that's Ripper Ride. Um, anyway, we should talk about we should talk about how like recent bonding of myself and yourself uh, over <laughs> our love for sneakers. Oh my god! Uh, where tell us start? about where where did your sneaker obsession start, and uh, we're going to do a bit of a show and tell of some yeah. of our favourite sneakers, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm just seeing, I've got so many pairs like sitting Can't down wait. here, so I'm going to be like, you're going to, I know that you're, I've got so many pairs, like wow, but okay. you've got, I know you've got like really, mine are not like limited edition, you've got, you're like full sneaker collector vibes. I've got a few. I've got a few. Yeah. <laughs> mine are more like 
cute sneakers that I found, a couple of kind of super retro ones, and a couple that I designed myself um, through... Do you Have you done that Nike by me? I have. Um, I haven't brought myself to buy a pair because I look at it after I've designed it and gone, oh, that's trash. No, I give it a so Oh, yeah, it's actually it really hard. Stuff. No, I've done two pairs. And to be honest, when I've got them, I haven't... Well, the first pair I didn't love when I first got them, and now I've actually grown to quite love. I'll actually show you those ones. These are the these are the first ones Let's do show it. that yeah, I designed. Bye, bye, bye. That's yeah. awesome. They're sick. Yeah, they're actually pretty sick. I don't know why. When I first got them, there was something about them I didn't like, but I actually really like them now, and I wear yep. them all the time. I specifically like this lace. I think the lace is pretty cool. The lace is. But cool. I love that you can actually design every element. It's even got an MGH at the back, so it's even oh, got my. What? That's so cool. You got my initials on the back. And the second pair I got, where are they? I just got them. Um, these ones, F4. which are actually... Nice. Yeah, the, the AF ones. I had to get my branding, so black black and red. Love that. Love that. So they're, they're pretty sick. cool. I like them. They're pretty cool. Like I just wasn't sure. That. I think I should have gone the grey. I think I should have gone a different texture, but... Yeah, no, um, I like the texture I like. That's just yeah, different. Not bad. And I love cool. the red sole's pretty cool. Red. It is. <laughs> no, but your turn. Show us, show us right. something cool okay. that you've got. Well, while we're on the topic of Air Forces. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm actually wearing these at the moment. So hang on, let me just sit back here. So you can see. Oh, these like, are the ones. Yeah. I've commented on these when you posted them. Yes. I died. I yep. died. These are the. Yeah. Um, South Korean Nike Air Forces. Um, so they made these in commemoration with the South Korean um, Olympic team. So oh two different God, colors. They've got so the pink, cool. got the um, different soles on there. But it took me a little while to get these um, at a reasonable price because if you're <laughs> into sneakers and you know about StockX, StockX is where um, people go to sell their shoes. And often at times, if it's a hard shoe to get, very expensive. So, Very expensive. <laughs> I, was to, I was able to score myself some of these on a bid, um, which I think was overlooked, and they didn't realise what they were selling them for. So I was really lucky. Oh, to get those. hell yes! I love that. Very good. If anyone is a size twelve and they want to buy this pair, feel free. They're on StockX at the moment, <laughs> but ah. you see these ones. Oh yes! Oh, they're sick. Pale Texture. baby blue stripe. Yep. Baby blue stripe. Yep. They're so sick. I, I love those. I'm born with keeping these or not, but they're a golf edition. So love, love, love. You can. I don't think you can really get these anywhere aside from StockX at the moment. So I don't Do know. Do you have a, um, in terms of style, um, either the AFs or Air Max or like, do you have an actual style that you I really, you like really love? Forces. I've got another four pairs of Air Forces. Um, they're yeah. sort of like my, they're kind I guess, of never go out of fashion do they, they don't they're just yeah. yeah look it took me a little while to get used to because they're flat sole shoes and they're just they're kind of like bricks but for shooting absolutely love them oh they're sick my husband my husband bought me these they're like a knit texture af yes one they're very very dope yep i agree there are they are like bricks though these ones are actually really light but um generally they're quite clunky like compared yeah. to the other the other nike shoes i yep. found if you've got something like this, this is uh, uh, oh, yes. the LeBron. I love the Le LeBron. <laughs> I was looking at those the other day. They're so cool. I they're just, so I just pretty. Love them. They're just different. They're just, yeah, totally they're out of so it. They're so pretty. What yeah. do I have to, like, hang on. Oh, I've got a kind of similar. They're not as good as the... Um, these ones are quite cute. Ah, uh, yeah, 270s. Love those. 270s. Nike actually sent me these, so I feel like very special oh, about these ones. Though. That's sick. Yeah, I don't know how. Some randomly, sometimes I get sent shit, and they That's sent me awesome. these. So yeah, feel just free before to I went send to Japan, me, which size is cool. twelve and a half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to stop my bill. These, oh, that's so these funny. Are Kevin Durant's. I think these are the. Oh uh, my uh, god! They're so dope. I'm dying. Love them. But these, so every year Kevin Durant does um, a commemoration to his Aunt Pearl, and they're always in this pinky pearl colour. So oh, if you look on StockX, they're I... about a thousand dollars worth now. So wow. Yeah. Unfortunately, I I've... love those. But um, yeah, I, I'm just gonna keep them for a little while now. Yes. The next yes. one I've got is the Air Force One. The ones. 
Yeah. Like you can't go wrong with the ones. That is like they the I mean, I will just say the uh the Jordan 3s are a, I'm a big fan Love of. Those. Love those. I found these in uh on tour uh in Dublin. Yep. And they were like 180 bucks and they were my size. I know I died. I was like as soon as I saw them, I was like I remember I was with Rule's mum, who's the the mum of the artist that we were, we were shopping, and I was like, "Can you just stay here next to these shoes? I'm gonna go run because I had to get cash. I was like, I'm gonna need to run and go get cash. Yeah. Please make sure nobody gets these shoes. They were just in this <laughs> random vintage store, and they were my size. That's I was like, sick. why? How? How do you find that randomly? And brand new. In the, they're not. They're like used. Like they I mean, they're they're, they're some clean. like, but they're they totally look like somebody wore them like twice that's like crazy. they're so such good condition so that is crazy. yeah <laughs> ash wow. is liking this chat the sneaker love chat that. love that <laughs> you should try a pair oh of these. i are, love these those. are called cosmic unities they're a bit funky because the... they've got like this um yeah this back heel sort of thing that just sort of sticks out but um yeah are I they actually... like a dark purple Oh, no, I they're, like they're fully those. black, but yeah, the ticket is kind black. of like a. I'll see if you can get in. Like a holo hologram sort of. Yeah, it's like so a. Sick. It's almost like someone painted it and just like kind of dragged it out. <laughs> ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But, um, Looks so yeah, sick. Super comfy, those. I absolutely <laughs> love those. How many more have you got left? Have you got a couple? I've more? got so many. Yeah, I've got the. Wow. Uh, I found these recently. Hang on, I've got to show you these ones. These are the basketball shoes that wow. I wore when I played the best basketball of my life when I was about 15, 16 years old. These are the Barclays. The Barclays, yeah. The ba <laughs> I found them on eBay recently. I was so stoked. And they, they like, again, like brand new condition. That's so Found sick. those. So, yeah, Love yeah, them. they're sick. Love they're them. so ridiculously chunky. I don't Aren't know how they? I ever... But like they're very... Um, they've got the front... Yeah, the, the Velcro. Yeah, we got the Velcro. I, it, they're very um, what's the word? Where they're very, they just mean a lot to me because I literally played my best basketball in these shoes. So I was like, go back to those times. Amazing. <laughs> another pair of basketball shoes I've got here. These and another set of Lebrons. Oh my. Whites. Absolutely love these ones. These are so comfy. Uh, the little air on the back are just like cushions your heels. So, so are good. you? Do you just wear these around? Like, are you happy to Ooh. wear them? Or oh. most? Of, <laughs> we're just checking out your fans. My camera's Sorry. gone. Sorry. Um, are you happy to wear your shoes around, or do you mostly? Are you kind of the traditional collector, and you kind of don't really wear them that much? Yeah, it depends. Like the the South Korea ones I showed, I probably won't wear that often. Because there's, <laughs> there's something that means. It means something to me because I've been looking for those for like the last year and a half and I couldn't justify paying like five, six hundred bucks. Um, but yeah. yeah, just, yeah, there's a few that I just don't wear. There's a couple um, that I do wear around, but winter, pff, I'm not wearing it. <laughs> yeah, just... totally. Have you been to Seoul before? Have you been to South Korea? No, I haven't. Would love to. Oh, they are unbelievably just so cool they're like literally I've, i mean i've been to japan i've been obviously all over america i've never seen swag like i've seen in south yeah. korea they just it's unbelievable they're just like really 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 trendy people that are just like very forward thinking and yeah um yeah it's very cool so if you get a chance to go out there i think you'd just be like the fashion especially especially like streetwear and street culture is just it's on point. insane I'm trying to see what Love else that. I've got down here. Love that. So I'm going to show these yeah. ones. I don't know if you can tell with these ones, but it's kind of got like a pearl finish. Oh, yes, you can. Yes. yes. Yeah. I, oh. yep. I love so, just a classic, classic, uh, you know, white or cream shoe too. I love these. The only thing with them is I've got a really wide foot and they're quite narrow, as you can oh, see. Oh, quite narrow. Yeah. Yes. Um, but yep. I love these. I just want to wear them all. <laughs> I showed these on stream once, but I do have these amazing Adidas um, sequin number. <laughs> they are sick. Which I, because I, I like wearing sneakers to um, like events. And this is this is one that I'll pull out because I don't like wearing heels. So I'll pull out the sneaker occasionally. That's the show it's a fancy sneaker. I it's a fancy that. sneaker. I love that. <laughs> they're very cool. I like So them. good. I didn't bring any yes. more out. I didn't know. That's how okay. That's okay. They're, that's, they're like we, my tops. we did I well. Like that, I think we've done very well. That's uh, that's that's pretty good. Um, I wanted to thank, 
I, I, it's not too bad. I've got um others. That, I've just got a lot of pretty sneakers. I guess I don't. I'm not. I'm not fully into like full sneakerhead um, buying like expensive sneakers. But I do have a lot of. This is like I've, I've probably got like I don't know. It's probably fifteen pairs down here. But that's no like I've got cupboards and <laughs> I just love sneakers so much. It's a terrible habit. You've got your normal. Well, also you got your, you know, your high rotation, kind of what you're happy to wear all the time. And then you've got your special ones that come out occasionally. Yep. So yeah, it's my sneakers for wedding. Exactly. Exactly. I spy. <laughs> so <laughs> um, do we have any last questions for Pat before we say goodbye? We've taken up so much of your time and you have, you know, things to do and babies to feed babies and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> ah, it's been awesome chatting. Yeah. Yeah, just... What have you got on for the rest of the week? Uh, I'm going to do some edits because I'm a bit behind on the last album or last set that we did. So I've got to catch up on those. Uh, yeah, Everyone's yeah, yeah. very understanding totally. and very lovely about it all. But I, yeah, got to get to them soon. So I'll get to those. Yes. And, um, what do we have on the rest of the week? Honestly, don't know. It's kind of like hour by hour at the moment. Like yeah. in like an hour. So it's like, okay, I'll just, totally. this is what we're doing now. Um, it's but, survival yeah. mode. That's what you need to do. It's Yeah. No, that's it. That's it. But no, we'll yeah. try and get out. We'll try and um, maybe go to the beach. We're only like five minutes from the beach. So we might try and get out and check that out and maybe see a couple of mates. And, yeah, ah, where are you? What, what suburb are you? We're in South Gippsland. So a little suburb called okay. um, Wonthaggy or South Dudley. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know so Wonthaggy. Yeah. We moved down last year around November and we bought where we are now. Um, before the market just Beautiful. shot up, just crazy. Oh my but, god, oh, oh, it's crazy. Who would have thought that it would do that in a pandemic? I'm I like, know. We were like, so because we own our house as well. We were really nervous about the opposite. We're like, oh my god, we're going to lose all the value of our house, and then everything just goes through the roof. You're like, How? I don't understand economics. I don't get it. What the... <laughs> Literally, like this is why I'm a photographer. This doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Is, but anyway, is yeah. An economist here, can you please? Yes, let it explain go on? why the world has gone to shit, <laughs> and nobody's nobody's got a job, but but the prices of properties have gone through the roof. Someone explain that. I don't know how to get it. Uh, so bizarre. Oh, <laughs> what are you up to? Uh, um, I have a. A shoot tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. Um, I don't even know. What, let me have a look at my diary. I'm actually, I'm a very kind of, um, what have I got on today kind of person as well. Uh, actually, I'm going tonight with my friend Joel to see Magic Mike because his friend is in that Magic Mike production, has been saying for ages, Michelle, we need to go and you're going to sit in the front row, which we call, they call the <laughs> splash zone. Apparently, yeah. I'm in the splash zone. <laughs> So I'm excited about that. I'm going to be in the splash show. That's tonight. Uh, and then, yeah, just I've got a shoot tomorrow, shoot Friday. And uh, yeah, that's about it, really. That's, oh, oh no, shoot Saturday. There's a few shoots, actually. A lot of yeah. Shoot. That's good. I know. Sometimes I feel like I should do less shooting, but we'll see. It's uh, Have you contemplated at the an moment? Editor? Say that again. Have you contemplated an editor? No. But I possibly would contemplate a retoucher. I really enjoy the editing process, like the actual color grading and sifting through photos and stuff. I don't love the retouching process. And I think if I was doing work, which I'm hopefully going to get into soon, is more kind of high-end brand stuff. Yep. Um, I think I would definitely get a retoucher for that. It's definitely outside my skills and capabilities. And the upskill I've tried, like I've done lessons with uh, Midnight Rush, who's an amazing streamer. He's been giving me lessons, which have actually really helped. And I've definitely noticed. Um, but it's you really need to like hone in on those retouching skills. And I'm doing so much shooting that I often don't have time to just be sitting there just yeah. practicing and practicing no, and practicing when, you're, when you've got to get so much client work out. So it's tricky. It. And if you don't, like, you've got to keep doing it to keep sharp. That's the other to thing. To keep if sharp, you don't, exactly, just, yeah. You, yeah, yep. So I think at some point if it got to the level where I wasn't, ha I think for musicians it's fine. It's like you're not doing beauty work. It's like you don't need that really, really high-end magazine-style retouching. You kind of get away with semi-decent you know what up bill you are <laughs> late seven months thank you so much for the subby um yeah i think if i got to that 
yeah, really high end where it's starting to look like beauty or whatever work, I would I would get a retoucher. But yeah, yeah I, I I really like the the editing process. I actually find it quite therapeutic just to sit yeah, and go through too. photos and um, it's all it puts me in a very happy place. So yeah. yeah, I don't think I would outsource that. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yes. Um, anyway, we've taken up an hour and 15 minutes of your time. Um, <laughs> I really appreciate it. Uh, Farmer Bob, welcome to the stream. Thanks for being here. And welcome, Bill. Nice to see you here as well. I'm going to stick around for a little bit longer. We're going to have a look at some recent work of our community. Uh, but thank you so much, Pat. That was a freaking awesome chat. Really great to uh, sit down and have a chat with you. Um, and get to know you a little bit better and your sneaker collection a little bit better as well, which is lots of fun. <laughs> no, no, I so love good. Sneaker collection. Thanks for having oh, me. It's thank, good to meet you and actually no. chat with you. So, yes, yeah. like properly chat rather than just a DM on Instagram like, oh my God, your sneakers, <laughs> which is usually what I'm doing when you've got just a new pair of sneakers. Forth. Post some more sneaker yeah. stuff. I hope I've given you a I will. I definitely need, I need to do that. I, uh, I definitely need to do that. I've got a, a highlight section that I need to update. So we will love 100% that. do that. Love that. Uh, thanks right. so much for the chat. Thanks, we'll everyone. Really see soon. you. Okay. See ya. Yay. That was a fun chat. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Super fun. Um, Farmer Bob, welcome to the stream. How's everybody going today? We're... Uh, Gonna have a look at some recent work of the community, which is sort of people have been delivering. Wait, first we should look at, we should definitely look at selfies. I believe that Ash, did you put a selfie in? <laughs> oh yes, she did. <laughs> Ash did put a selfie. <laughs> Finally back in the stream, Ash. <laughs> Oh my god, I love seeing your selfies when you're watching the stream. It's so fun. This is very cool. Extra happy today. Are you, how, are you just working away today, Ash? What are you up to? Where's Chloe, by the way? Chloe is isolating. Quarantining. She's quarantining and she doesn't even want to hang out with us today. <laughs> She's sick of us. You know, oh, okay. Not happy about work. That's a bummer. We need to get you happy about your work, Ash. <laughs> um, thanks for sending in the selfie. I love it. You're just exhausted. I feel like that's the feeling at the moment. Everybody's exhausted. Oh, what? I, what was the context of this gif? Wait, did I miss what you said? Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, what big teeth you have. There we go. I see. Yeah, I feel like... I'm not even going to say post-COVID because we're still in the shit. Uh, Post-lockdown for Melburnians is just a constant state of exhaustion. It's just like, don't have enough energy to do all of the things in the day. Um, that's just generally how I move through life at the moment. <laughs> oh, here we go. What a good stuff. What wearing a mask like a responsible human. I love it. <laughs> Sending in the selfie. <laughs> Stuck at work. Someone get you a PA. Yes, all of the feels. Bill! Bill's... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Look at Bill's t-shirt. Oh my god. <laughs> it's got all of Bill's moods. Normal, happy, content, playful, unsure. Bill in his natural state. Oh my god, that's so funny. Did someone get you that t-shirt or did you make it? It's great merch. It's all the same. This is Bill. That's what Bill looks like. I love it, Bill. Your co-workers made it. <laughs> that is amazing. I love that so much. <laughs> 
so good. You wore it to a huge pin. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. And then our CTA got up to give a speech and he had one too. <laughs> I would just love to wear that around. Just no, no context needed. Just Bill's moods. So good. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. That's so funny. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at where are we? In our Discord channel. Show your work. All right, we're gonna scroll back a bit because there's been a few. Where are we up to? since the last stream. Oh, we've got so much amazing stuff. I think it was here, Mill City. So Mill City posted a, I think this was from a video shoot. I think he's not in the stream today, so I can't clarify, but I believe he was shooting a video the other day. This is so cool. How sick are the lighting? So these little, um, they have a name that I've just forgotten. Why don't know my brain's not working? Uh, pixel tubes. Pixel tubes is what they're called. Um, yeah, pixel sticks or pixel tubes. You can get the little ones, the half ones, what I think are the sticks. I think these are the tubes. But um, you can um, change the colours of them. And there was a stage where we used them on every video clip and every photo shoot. <laughs> they're so great. They're so transportable and light. And you can just pop them all over the place and... They just give off great light. So such a good light source for any photography that you're doing. I love it. Good stuff. That's such a great shot. I really love that. And here's a little back of the camera shot as well. I love the tones. So cool. I'm wearing the uh, Kiki merch today, by the way. She's not here, so... I was wearing it just for her. Um. <laughs> Kiki get fucked. <laughs> exactly. That's what she gets for not being here. <laughs> yes, black magic. I didn't even notice that was a black magic camera. Yes. Beautiful. It'd be great to we'll have to get Mill City to post the uh, the video clip when it's up as well. Very, very cool. Very cool. Digital beard. I'm back with backstage portraits at wrestling shows. God, I'm just constantly in awe of these portraits that uh, he's been taking. They're so cool. So dramatic. Very cool. Oh yeah, that's the one that you needed the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Where is she? We need to yell at her. Oh, this one's cool. With the jacket. Super dramatic lighting. Which I think really works for these um, wrestling portraits. I can turn off my night bot. There we go. Love this one. This one's cool. I should update my um Maybe I can actually change. Let's go into let's go into art for a while. There we go. The rat is cute. It is. Still a little handstand as well. <laughs> it's it's interesting that um the rat is almost like the same size as Jetta. Like she's the size of a rat. <laughs> It's funny because um, this breed of dog, 
Brussels griffin were actually bred to hunt rats. And they don't look like little rat hunters, but occasionally she will see something and like the devil will come out in her and she changes from like this sweet little innocent gorgeous little puppy <laughs> into like a little rat hunter <laughs> it's very shocking when it happens it's very shocking so don't have any rats around her or anything that looks like a little rat either <laughs> it's pretty funny <laughs> yeah this is cool i love this a lot Great shot. Yeah, she. I reckon she would. I love squirrels though. When we were in America, every time we saw a squirrel, we would just run after it and just like, just think it's the cutest thing. And every American just look at us like, what are you looking at the squirrel for? Just thought it was the cutest thing ever. We're like, we don't have them. They're cute. Um, this is the shot that Janelle just took recently. Uh, this is a gorgeous bird. I saw this bird. I don't know what it's called, but I'm pretty sure it was really similar to a bird that we saw in the Northern Territory recently. All of our squirrels are gone. <laughs> the snakes and spiders got them, probably. Although we have possums, so... No, I don't think it's an ibis. An ibis is a bin chicken. Bin chicken's actual name. I feel like it's got a different name. Um, they would have told us uh, on the cruise that we went on, which I can't remember. But but they um, when they get wet, they, they go like that with their wings and then they dry it out in the sun for ages. So they just sit there like that for ages. Possums are punk rock squirrels. That's funny. Possums are pretty awesome. <laughs> it's an Alan and Steve bird. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know, Ash. I don't know the technical term for this one. <laughs> Paint me like one of your French girls. It is a bit posy like that, isn't it? <laughs> Very pretty. <laughs> you did say that bit. Uh, oh, Gab. Gab was uh, playing around with a, a photo from Rule from Laneway, which was um, the last festival that we shot. I like to call those times uh, BC. In the times of BC, before COVID, uh, we used to do things like play festivals. And uh, this was the last one that we played, which was uh, Laneway. Uh, it's actually crazy how much older Rule looks now than this particular photo, which wasn't that long ago, but um, she did a little bit of, uh, what would you call this? Design work? A bit of art? A bit of design work? Which is very cool. I like this a lot. She's got some lyrics over here. Killing, uh, procreate, that's right, she's doing a procreate. Have you got procreate? Do you use that at all, Ash? Or do you mainly use Photoshop? It looks lots of fun. It looks like fun to do design sort of stuff. Um, you've used it a few times. Do you prefer it? Or is it just like just different, like a different? Use for, uh, it's probably like one of those tools that just like Photoshop's better. Oh, you've only used it for drawing, okay. Photoshop's better for some things and then Procreate. Um. <laughs> what up, Randy? Good something, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> How are you, Randy? So good to see you here. How are you? We just had a great interview and now we're just uh, we're doing a bit of show and tell. Show and tell with some community photos. Just got done shooting and now I'm here. Great to see you here. What were you shooting today, Randy? Tell us about what you've been doing. Can you put something in, uh, yeah, post something in the show and tell so we can see it. I'd love to see that. That would be awesome. 
Ash, have you got anything that you can post from this week? What have you been shooting? Doesn't matter what it is. It's like a little... What's everyone been up to in the community this week section of our stream, which I do love. I love seeing what everybody's been doing. Some Richmond stuff. Do it! Do it! <laughs> Oh, hang on. I'm just gonna. What does it say? Uh. Okay, I need to parking situation. Okay, sorry. I'm just seeing an email about tomorrow. I have asked the question. I'm doing a really a fun shoot on location tomorrow, which should be fun. I haven't actually shot on location for ages, so I'm excited about that. I've just so often been doing stuff in the studio and the location is so sick. I'll show the location a little bit later. I'll go, we'll go through your show and tell stuff and then. The stuff I posted is from, in bet from between the new place and your studio. Awesome. Let's check it out. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Okay. Oh, this is Shelly. Shelly posted some gig stuff because, you know, New Zealand are just pretty much back to normal. And they're all shooting gigs and stuff like that. Oops. But I think... Accidentally went into a room that I didn't mean to go into. Clubhouse. <laughs> Joel just sent me a message and said, We're getting the splash zone. I'm ready for the splash zone tonight, guys. Um... Okay, we'll have a look at those in a sec. <laughs> I will have so much fun, you know. <laughs> uh, um, Asia did a little uh, self-portrait shoot today. She's been using the new camera, which is really cool. Asia needs to do a t-shirt with all of the all of the different faces of Asia. The original Seth, welcome, welcome to the stream. Thank you. We're looking at some uh, photos that our community created this week. These are uh, members of the crew. These are some self-portraits that Asia did. <coughs> welcome here. Are you okay? Nice little cough. <laughs> uh, yeah, join our Discord. Feel free to, if you've got any uh, recent photography work, feel free to post it. We are currently showing it. It's in the Show Your Work channel. Do you, what do you shoot, Seth? Oh, here we go. Last one of Arcea's. So good to see Arcea posting with her new camera. Yes. Good stuff. What type of photography do you do? Do you do? Oh my God, that didn't make any sense. What type of photography do you do? We do, the community is all kinds of photographers, to be honest. Oh, look at... Playing with some glitch effects, pixel sorting is something I've been wanting to do. This is, uh, Janelle's on holidays at the moment, so I think she's um, taking some shots from... I've seen lots of people doing this at the moment, this kind of glitchy... Sports photography, very cool! Um, I don't know if Gypsy Jay's here. He used to do a bit of sports photography. Who else does sports? Is there anyone I can think of that... Oh, your dad used to. Um, if you go into, if you thumbs up to the community guidelines, there's a show your work channel. Pop your stuff in the bottom of that. I spy. Oh, so this is, wait, what's this? What, is this your new, is this where you're living now? How pretty is this building? This is so cool. Um, number s the bike 61 is me. Dad took the photos for you. Awesome. Mateo, welcome to the stream. Motorsports, awesome. I wish I could afford that. Oh, if he doesn't respond, I'm deeming the hammock is abandoned. 
the hammock. Let's go. That's definitely not your place. It's beautiful though. I love it. I love the tones in this photo as well. Um, I'm a big, I mean, we live in a townhouse, so I'm a big fan of this style of townhouse living as well. Um, this is similar to, we have a three story townhouse that has, it's got a big, it's got a rooftop garden, so it kind of looks like it's four stories, but this is very, uh, gorgeous building. Thank you, Seth. We'll have, we'll check it out in a sec. Totally out of place to the, yeah. Well, I kind of like it's on the corner though. It's its own little, its own little space there. It looks cool. I really like it. It's very futuristic. Yeah. I love how it's like, are these two, is it, I'm assuming it's two separate townhouses, but there's like, there's structural stuff that kind of joins them too, which is cool. Very cool. It's a great building. Oh my god, Randy. That was a long time ago. Oh, it's so cool to see where you live. I want to come visit. Isn't it really cold or is it? No, it's summer at the moment. I'm like, why is this person in shorts? Yo! <laughs> what? What? With the ten subbies, ten subbies. Let's go, <laughs> Sly Dog. Thank you so much for the subbies. It's a celebration, and a hundred biddies from <laughs> what? What? Wait, what, Sly Dog? What are you doing? Another 10 subbies. Oh my god, Sly Dog with the 20 gifted subs. <laughs> oh my god, thank you so much. Randy's joined in. Randy's joined in with the gifted subbies. <laughs> subbies, subbies, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> 